Hi everybody, Justin here again from chemistrynotes.com and we're continuing today with uh, the last video we introduced molarity and today we're going to continue with molarity and we're going to do some more sample problems. So let's just get straight to the notes, shall we? This is page one of today's notes and remember we're on section four, section four of our notes, concentration and molarity. Well, the extent to which a solute dissolves in a solution is expressed by the solution's concentration. Now, there are a lot of different ways to express concentration. There's molarity, molality, mass percent, normality. Concentration is most often, however, expressed as molarity. So molarity gets a big M, symbol big M, and here is the equation for molarity. Molarity, big M, is moles of solute per liter of solution. All right? So you definitely want to remember that boxed equation right there. So looking at the equation, molarity is moles of solute per liter of solution. In other words, one molar is equal to one mole per liter. All right, let's do this example. For those of you who are subscribers and you follow my notes, this is just the same example from last time because this is the easiest of, I believe there's four molarity problems we're going to do today. Example, calculate the molarity of a solution made by dissolving 11.5 grams of solid NaOH in enough water to make 1.50 liters of solution. All right, so it says calculate the molarity. So I immediately write down the molarity equation. Molarity, big M, is moles of NaOH per liter of solution, okay? Now we need to calculate the numerator, moles of NaOH. Let's do that. 11.5 grams of NaOH, start with what we're given, put it over one, we get from grams to moles in one step by dividing by the molar mass, 0.288 moles of NaOH. So this is moles of NaOH, this isn't molarity. We're only halfway there. That was the numerator for the molarity equation. Now, if you remember, molarity is moles per liter, moles of solute per liter of solution. We put the two together, we end up with 0.192 moles per liter or 0.192 big M NaOH, 0.192 molar. NaOH. All right, example number two for molarity. <clears throat> All right, example, give the concentration of each type of ion in a solution of 0 0.50 molar cobalt 2 nitrate, CONO32. Well, if we think mole ratios here, right? Each type of ion, we only have two ions, right? We have a cation, cobalt, two plus, and then we have two NO3 minuses. And this is the balanced equation right here. CONO32 dissolved in water yields CO2 plus AQ plus two NO3 minus AQs. So in our notes here, let's write that down. It says, for each mole of cobalt two nitrate dissolved, the solution contains one mole of CO2 plus and two moles of NO3 minus. So what can we say then? A solution that contains 0 0.50 molar CONO32 contains 0 0.50 molar CO2 plus ions and 0 0.50 times two, in other words, 1.0 molar of NO3 minus ions. All right, so this is our third sample problem for molarity problems or molarity calculations. Calculate the number of moles of chloride ions in 1.75 liters of 1.0 molar ZnCl2. All right, so first of all, so many times you are going to see something like 1.75 liters of 
1.0 molar ZnCl2. So many of these molarity problems, they give you a volume in liters, and then right away it says of, and then it gives you molarity. So that's what my note is about here. Anytime you see blank liters, or milliliters, but blank liters of blank molar, you're usually going to end up multiplying those two together because doing so is a liter times a mole per liter, which gives you moles. And that's exactly what happens in this problem. See what we're doing? 1.75 liters over 1 times 1.0 moles per liter, zinc Cl2, gives me 1.75 moles of ZnCl2. All right, now. It didn't want the moles of ZnCl2, it wanted the moles of chloride ions. So start with what you're given, put it over 1, 1.75 moles of ZnCl2, and there is, well, there are 2 moles of Cl- for every 1 mole of ZnCl2. We end up with an answer, 3.50 moles of Cl- ions. All right, next example, blood serum is about 0.14 molar NaCl. What volume of blood contains 1.0 milligrams of NaCl? Well, we've got two things in this problem, so it's not just as easy as, quote, start with what you're given and put over one. You have to actually figure out what they're asking you here. So regarding the 1.0 milligrams of NaCl, if we convert this to moles of NaCl, we can use the 0.14 moles per liter to get ourselves right into units of liters, all right? And liters is a volume. So that's our plan of attack here. So let's see how we do this. First thing we're going to do, we got 1.0 milligrams of NaCl. I want to get that converted into moles. Usually that's a one-stepper, but because we're in milligrams, we have 1,000 milligrams for every one gram of NaCl, I divide by the molar mass, look at the units canceling, I carry everything from left to right with me. All of the units carry. I have 1.75 times 10 to the minus fifth moles NaCl. So I use that in number two right here. 1.7 times 10 to the minus fifth moles of NaCl divided by the molarity of the solution is going to give me liters of solution. So Number two, 1.7 times 10 to the minus fifth moles of NaCl times one liter of solution over 0.14 moles NaCl gives me an answer of 1.2 times 10 to the minus fourth liters of blood. And then the blood is our serum, it's our solution. Next example, a chemist needs 1.00 liters of an aqueous 0 0.200 molar potassium dichromate solution. How much solid K2Cr2O7, potassium dichromate, does he need to weigh out? Well, you see this? One liter of and then a molarity. If we multiply those two together, liter times molarity is a liter times a mole per liter, we get moles. Once we're in moles, we can go to grams really easily using the periodic table in molar masses. That's our plan. So 1.00 liters times 0 0.200 moles, K2Cr2O7 per liter, gets me 0 0.200 moles of K2Cr2O7. That becomes my new, start with what I'm given, put it over one. So 0 0.200 moles, K2Cr2O7, one mole on the bottom for every 294.2 grams, that's the molar mass, add that up on the periodic table, I get 58.8 grams of K2Cr207. So that's, in general, that's basically all the types of molarity problems you'll see. So we've got plenty of experience on how to do the molarity calculations. And the last topic for today is dilutions. All right, dilutions. Well, people use uh, very qualitative terms like, oh, that's very dilute, it's very watery very dilute or very concentrated means it's very heavy. You really taste the substance inside. These are just qualitative terms. So, okay. We can get very specific or quantitative in chemistry. 
So let's just, what I just said, let's put it in our notes. It says, people use the terms dilute and concentrated every day to describe the contents of a liquid qualitatively. Dilute is like saying something is watered down. Concentrated means it contains a lot of ingredients that can be tasted. Now that's in everyday life. We, of course, wouldn't taste anything in the lab, right? So that's a qualitative standpoint. From a quantitative point of view, chemists can prepare dilutions of solutions having an actual or a specific concentration. All right, now, usually highly concentrated stock solutions are purchased by a lab and then we take small amounts of that stock solution add water to it to make the desired more dilute solution for our lab purposes so what does it say here it says usually highly concentrated stock solutions are purchased by a lab and the chemist will add water to achieve the desired molarity the desired concentration there's a very simple equation we use for this it's m1 v1 equals m2 v2 where m is a big m so it's your molarity mole per liter and volume is v and volume is in liters it can actually be in any unit really as long as they match but we'll put we'll say liters for here all right, so a note on M1V1 equals M2V2. You notice that the moles of solute are not changing from situation one to situation two. We're just adding more water, okay? So the moles, moles of solute stays the same on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side of that equation. All right, let's do an example, a dilution problem. What volume of 16 molar sulfuric acid, that's very concentrated, what volume of 16 molar sulfuric acid must be used to prepare 1.5 liters of a 0 0.10 molar H2SO4 solution? You see you have liters of A and then the concentration in big M. Chances are we're going to multiply them together, right? Yes. So let's just gather up all of our knowns and unknowns here. M1, 16 molar. V1, unknown. M2, 0 0.10 molar, V2, 1.5 liters. We put these guys all together inside of our M1, V1 equals M2, V2. We'll make sure our, vo our volumes have the same units, and they're both in liters here. We end up with a value for X, simple algebra, of 0 0.0094 liters, or 9.4 milliliters of 16 molar H2SO4. So... What does that mean? 9.4 milliliters. It says it wanted us to make 1.5 liters. That doesn't mean we've done this problem wrong. It just means the following. To prepare 1.5 liters of a 0 0.10 molar H2SO4 solution, the chemist would use that 9.4 milliliters of 16 molar H2SO4 and then dilute it to a total volume or a final volume of 1.5 liters. So you're gonna have 1.5 liters total. Of that 1.5 liters, only 9.4 milliliters are the 16 molar H2SO4. All right, so if you like the way I use these uh, handwritten notes in order to present certain topics in general chemistry, uh, please feel free to subscribe. The button's right down there and I'll see you next time. All right. Thank you very much.